part three of my near-death experience. So this man's voice came out of my mouth. And it said, and I've never read scripture, so I would not know this. Father, why hast thou forsaken me? But it was said with authority like this. Father, why hast thou forsaken me? And then there was silence. And I laid there and the darkness is getting darker and darker. <laughs> I couldn't even see anything. But I heard the voice and I knew it was Jesus. And I laid there. It seemed like five minutes went by and I'm just laying there. And then the voice repeated the same thing again, but he yelled it. He yelled it so loud. I thought, literally, I cannot believe it. And I'm not thinking because I'm a soul, but I, you know, I'm like, my neighbor's going to hear that. <laughs> but even though I'm a soul, but, um, he screamed it, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? And it was loud. And this is what happened. There was a twisting that happened in circles deep down in my stomach. Okay? And it kept twisting until it got so tight. This twist, it was like, oh, it was so much resistance. It snapped. And when it snapped, like, my stomach jumped. And then blood, I felt like a warmth rushing all throughout my body. And I'm laying there feeling this. All the warmth rushing up to my chest, rushing up to my arms, up to my head. And I felt all that warmth going to my end. Automatically, I got up and I ran. And it wasn't me running. Because I, I was, it was erratic. It was chaotic. I could not stop running. I ran into things. I ran into the kitchen table. I knocked the chairs over. I, not, I pushed the table across the kitchen. And I kept running and running into walls and running into the hours. I, <laughs> I was running. And it wasn't because of fear. I could not stop running. And I just kept going and going and lapsed around my apartment. Circles and circles around it. Coming into the bedroom. Going into my bathroom. Going into the kitchen. Going into my living room. Back in here. Back in there. Back in there. Back in there. Back in. And then finally I slowed down. And caught my breath. And Jesus said. Now. I want you to call your mother. And I want you to witness to her. And so I called my mother. And I told her everything that happened. And she said, praise God. Praise God. She just kept saying, praise God. And um, she was very happy. Um, but I was shaken up inside. So, um. Yes, I did get born again in 1989. Now, at Hartford Hospital, there was a 3D scan that was done of my heart. And so, here we go. So here is the front of my heart. When they did this 3D scan, it wasn't... It wasn't a scan of a other heart that's somewhat like what my heart is. An actual, it's like a 3D. <laughs> it, I had all of these things hooked to me. It was intense and it was a surgeon that did it. Two surgeons were doing this. She, um, but I seen my actual heart beating in my chest. I seen it. So we're watching it beat. I'm seeing the top of it. And then... She, she said, hold on. She says, wait a minute. And the heart's like, I'm seeing the top. We were seeing it going, and then it went, boom, 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 boom. and then she's seen this portion of it. And it kind of popped up. 
And she says, that is supposed to be smooth. She says, I don't know what this is. She says, what is this? And I'm looking at it too. And this is what it looked like. This was the scar and the thickness. Okay. From the midpoint of my heart, wrapping all the way around to the back. Okay. The scar. Okay. So this is what it did. It split open. So that's what my heart did. Did, and the Lord healed me. See, there's a scar, and it's there today. I just, my heart exploded, the best way to describe it. So they were prepping me with iodine after they seen the skin. And they wanted to cut me open because they said I had a heart tear and that I was bleeding internally. Now I said to them, this was months ago when this happened, you know, and that I was healed. And the Lord healed me completely. And that's a scar. And they said, we, we cannot be sure. We can't be sure of this. We, that is all supposed to be smooth. Your heart is supposed to be smooth. None of that. It's supposed to be just nice and smooth. Well, it was. It isn't. Okay? It isn't. My heart is not. And this evidence of how good, how glorious God is, how forgiving and merciful God is, and that's that. So um, it's uh, it's not easy to go back there. But anyways, the surgeon, the male surgeon, he was flown in on a helicopter. Okay. And he says, boy, you're lucky that I'm here today. You know. And um, he said, from what you're saying, you're claiming that this happened and that you were, you know, in other words, I, I was telling him, no, 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 I'm okay. Don't prep me up. I was like, no, I'm not going into surgery. I'm fine. God healed me. And I'm telling him all of that. No, I'm not going into surgery. I'm arguing with him, the two surgeons. Okay. I'm arguing with them. And he, he said, well, I guess then you have a story for me. So let's have it. So I sat down with them and I told him the story of how Jesus had mercy on me. And that he vouched for me and stood before God and said, Lord, why hast thou forgotten about me? In other words, God, Jesus stood in front of me, in front of God and said, Father, what about me? Have you forgotten about me? So Jesus had mercy on me and he came back. And he didn't leave me. But I was so close to going to hell. And if it wasn't for the mercy of Jesus Christ, I would not be here. So as far as my faith, after this moment, I know that Jesus Christ, and this is my faith, is the only begotten Son of God. Jesus Christ is God in flesh. And the only way to love others is to give your life 100% to Jesus Christ. And if you have not, all of your love is going to be in vain. Because it's not the Father's love. You receive the Father's love. When you accept the Son, which is the Father. So, there, God and Jesus are one. And if you deny His Son, you deny God. So, once we give our lives to Christ, as I have done, Christ has given me his life, and I have everlasting life. I have the DNA of my Lord and Savior inside of me. I let my flesh die in Calvary with Christ. And when he rose again, I rose with him in his body. And he is my head. He is my husband. And I am his bride. And I am his body, part of his body, and he is my head. 
be it spirit, spiritual and physical for me. So my faith today is in order to know whether or not if you're saved. Do you wake up in the morning and talk to God? Is God number one priority in your life? Do you have a strong, close, intimate relationship with Jesus? Do you know his voice? I hope this message touches your heart and softens it because this is the truth. I did die and I'm not a perfect person, but I repent when I sin and I do sin. But when I sin, I repent and I live a holy and I walk in the footsteps of Christ and I carry my cross and I refuse to sin as much as I possibly can. Not because that's what saves me, but because it honors my Father. Because what matters to my Heavenly Father, it matters to me. And if I hurt Him, that hurts me. Because God is my true love. He's all of our true loves. God is true love. And it's unconditional. That is what God wants from us, to love one another unconditionally, just as he loves us, and to read his word, no matter if the word, no matter what version it is, no matter if it's reduced it down to five words, those five words are the most powerful words in the world because they came from God, and I believe every single word in that scripture came from my Heavenly Father because he is the word and that this is the only book the bible the torah in the whole entire world that represents my father our father i honor it it saves us it's what we all read together so god bless you if you are god's child and if you are not Go to Jesus. In your time of need, call on him. Goodbye.